What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of the crack a pack series today We're opening up a pack of journey into Nyx. weirdly not something that we open a lot of on this uh, I mean these are picked at random. It just doesn't seem to come up very often There are actually a few cards in here that I'm pretty stoked about the gods of course are great uh, But there are a few other cards that I'm hoping to see so maybe we'll get something good this time but as always, we are going to look at it from a draft perspective. So we'll look at this and hopefully be able to determine what, uh, if we were drafting, what our pack one pick one would actually be. Uh, I'll do the best I can. I did not draft uh, at least not much of this set. I don't remember drafting it very much. I didn't really think it was a very good set, to be honest. Uh, again, few decent cards, but overall not my favorite. So we'll see what we can do. But uh, we will go through every card. And our first one here is Font of Fertility. Uh, it's one green for an enchantment. You can pay one in a green, sacrifice it, and search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle your library. Uh, this is actually, I think, okay. Not amazing, but it does fix you, and I like that. I think it's, it's enchantments were a big theme in this, so it feels weird that it's an enchantment, but it actually does kind of fit the theme. Uh, it also actually helps with things like devotion because you can play this out. Uh, I'm sure we'll probably see a devotion card in here and I'll explain a little bit more, but you can have it out which builds your devotion to green in this case. So I do like that. Um, it's just like an enabler though. Uh, it does fix you, so that's really the big draw for this, uh, but probably not a first pick. Uh, Rotted Hulk uh, is a 2-5 vanilla creature for three and a black. Not a fan of cards like these. Uh, there's always a few of these and especially some of the like standard just random sets I they just are really bad uh, they're kind of a trap for players because it's like oh well it's it's really easy to keep it alive because it has five toughness and they can't burn it and yes that's true but it only has two power it's really not gonna do that much and it costs four mana so by that point your opponent is probably playing some better stuff so I'm not a fan of cards like this uh, they're just generally speaking pretty bad uh, God Hunter Octopus is a 5-5 five, five for 5 and a blue. Uh, it can't attack unless the, the defending player controls an enchantment or an enchanted permanent. Uh, this is an interesting card. I don't like cards that are reliant on whatever your opponent's doing just because it's very easy for them just to not play things. Uh, or build their deck around, you know, a specific thing. And it may not even be that they're actively trying to build around, like, not having enchantments or something like that. Uh, it's just that... If their deck or whatever they were drafting, if that archetype does not have very many enchantments for that, that specific archetype, it's not really worth playing a card like this where it can't really do anything unless they have the enchantments. So not a fan of cards like these. They're just a little too specific. That being said, it's a decent sideboard card. If you're against somebody that you notice does play a lot of enchantments and you're in blue, I think this is serviceable. Uh, I do think that there are instances where this is probably okay filler. Uh, in, in this set specifically, only because enchantments are so prevalent. So, not a huge fan of it. Unfortunately, it just doesn't seem all that good. Uh, Rouse the Mob is an instant for one red. It has Strive, so it costs two and a red more to cast for each target beyond the first. Uh, so you can actually target more people with it, or more uh, creatures with this. Any number of target creatures each get plus two, plus zero, and gain trample until end of turn. So this is really just like a high-powered uh, combat trick. I like that you can just do it for one green and give uh, just a singular creature plus two and uh, plus zero and then trample. I think that's pretty good. Uh, I also think that being able to cast it on multiple targets is a good option. I think this could potentially be one of those cards that finishes off a game in a red aggressive deck just because you can cast it on multiple creatures. So I do think it's a decent combat trick. That being said, it is a combat trick. I do not like taking combat tricks first uh, because that's really not a reason to be in a particular color. It also does not give you any direction, so not a fan of it. Uh, Font of Vigor is an enchantment for one and a white. You can pay two and a white, sacrifice it, and you gain seven life. I think this is absolute garbage. Uh, I hate cards like this. Just pure life gain is really bad in my opinion. Yes, this does help with devotion, which now that I'm thinking about it, might be in uh, Theros, not this set. I don't know if there was any of it in uh, Journey into Next, but uh, it's just, it's bad. It's not, it's really bad card. Don't play that. <laughs> Uh, Gluttonous Cyclops is a 5-4 for 5 and a red, and it has Monstrosity 3. Uh, if you pay 5 and 2 red, 
If this creature isn't monstrous, uh, you put three plus one plus one counters on it and it becomes monstrous. So it's a one time thing. You can't redo this, but it does get three one one counters on it, which puts it up to an eight seven. Uh, if, as long as you can pay that seven mana after you've already paid the six. Yes, it is very mana intensive, but this is a great bomb. Uh, it's not the best bomb, but uh, it's not super efficient, but it is quite good. It gives you a mana sink as well if you really just don't have anything to do. Being able to monstrosity this seems okay. Uh, so, so far this is definitely the pick in my opinion. Uh, Blood Crazed uh, Hoplite, I hope I'm saying that correctly, is a 2-1 for 1 and a black. It has Heroic. So whenever you cast a spell that targets it, you put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. And whenever a counter is placed on it, remove a plus 1 plus 1 counter from target creature and opponent controls. That seems really interesting to me. So this is like Heroic and Anti-Heroic all together which is really weird, um, in my opinion. I do think this is a pretty good two drop, uh, especially if you're filled with like black red aggro and some combat tricks or something like that. You can kind of build this up and hopefully get something really big out of it. Uh, it is only a two drop, so you can get it down early and hopefully you know really start to pile it on if you can. Uh, but it doesn't seem all that great. I think I'd rather have the Cyclops to be honest, but uh, I do kind of like this card surprisingly. Uh, Oppressive Raise is an enchant creature for one white. Uh, the enchanted creature can't attack or block unless its controller pays three. Activated abilities of the enchanted creature cost three more to activate. I actually really like this card, uh, weirdly more than the Cyclops, only because the Cyclops is red. Uh, I know that's a little bit weird, but the thing that I don't like about that, red decks tend to be much more aggro focused. Uh, that being said, I didn't really play a whole lot during this set, so I don't know if that's really how it is in this one. but. Uh, high mana costed red cards are a little bit of a red flag for me. Uh, I tend not to lean towards that. I really want to be low to the ground aggro, so not a huge fan. But Oppressive Rays is really, really good. Just tempo and pseudo removal. It's not amazing, but it is really good and efficient, so I do like that. Uh, Warwing Siren is a 1-3 for 2 and a blue. It has flying and heroic, so whenever you cast a spell that targets it, you put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Uh, this seems like a decent flyer. Uh, it's not amazing. It's a 1-3 three for 3, which is like, okay. Uh, it's going to be tough to block, but uh, being able to put some 1-1 one, one counters on it does seem quite good. I think I like the rays better. Uh, well, I don't know. I'm going to keep this over here for now. Uh, Spite of Mogus is one red for a sorcery. It deals damage to target creature equal to the number of instants and sorcery cards in your graveyard. And then you also scry one. Uh, I think this is a good card in a Spells Matters deck, but I don't know how easy it is to build a Spells Matters deck in this uh, limited environment. I just have no clue to be honest. So I would be a little cautious about taking this. You really need a pretty high sorcery, instant and sorcery count to make this great. But even if you only have two or three, you'd probably be able to remove something. And for one red mana, that seems pretty efficient. And also to be able to scry one is pretty efficient. So I'm going to keep it in the pile here for now. Uh, Nessian Game Warden is a 4-5 for three and two green. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you look at the top X cards of your library, where X is the number of forests you control. You may reveal a creature card from among them and put it into your hand. And then you put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. Uh, I actually really like this card. I think this is probably going to be the pick so far. Uh, one, it's a pretty decent bomb for five mana. Yes, it's not huge. It's only a four or five, but it's going to outpower a lot of stuff that probably is out on the field at that point in the game. Uh, plus, you're going to have force out just to be able to play this uh, and to be able to look at the top few cards of your deck and then pull another creature fuels your hand and gives you another play, uh, a follow up play the next turn. So I really like this. Definitely the card I would pick so far. <laughs> uh, Nyx Fleece Ram. Uh, it's a 0-5 for one and a white. At the beginning of your upkeep, you gain one life. Really interesting card. Uh, a lot of people did some fun things with this card. I like it. It's not good and limited, so I'm just going to go ahead and pass over this one. Uh, wow. Okay. Well, a Johnny Mentor of Heroes. Uh, fantastic Planeswalker. Four loyalty Planeswalker for three, a green and a white. Uh, for plus one, it distributes uh, three 1-1 one, one counters uh, among one, two, or three target creatures you control. Sorry, I'm trying to read as I'm doing this, and it's very small from where I am. Uh, but very powerful plus one ability. Uh, another plus one ability, 
Look at the top four cards of your library. Uh, you may reveal an aura, creature, or planeswalker card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Uh, again, great. It's going to fuel you. It's going to keep you moving forward. I like that. Uh, and then for minus eight, you gain 100 life, which is hilarious. Uh, the, obviously, you're probably never going to ultimate this card, but Ajani is absolutely awesome. Great, powerful card. Definitely the card I would pick here. I don't really think there's a question. We do, of course, here we go. We have a foil. So cast into darkness, enchant creature uh, for one and a black. Enchanted creature gets minus two, mi minus zero, and can't block. Really re just pointless to talk about. The clear pick in my mind is definitely a Johnny. Uh, super, super powerful card. Planeswalkers are great in limited, and so to actually be able to pull one uh, just in general is pretty awesome in limited. So definitely going to be the card I would pick. Let me know if you disagree in the comment section below, but if you really enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. If you really enjoyed it, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. With that, I am going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I will see you in the next Crack-A-Pack video.